Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, back on that 200K grind, you feel me? I for real can't believe it's about to be 2018 already. This is one of the most cliche things to say, but it seriously feels like this year went by way too freaking fast. Everything has changed so much in just one calendar year alone. I got a bunch of great supporters now, more people than I could ever ask for to wake up every day and talk about basketball with. That's cool and all, but the crazy thing is, I'm not even just talking about on a personal level. I'm talking about on the NBA level as well. So much has changed. Just think about it. This time last year, most people were still hung up on the fact that KD joined the Golden State Warriors. That's what everyone was talking about. Now this time this year, we're talking about what the heck is wrong with the Thunder and I don't know, Lonzo Ball. So the topics of course changed, but then think about all the players that changed, changed team. One year ago, Chris Paul was still on the Clippers. Carmelo Anthony was still on the Knicks. Paul George was still on the the Pacers, Jimmy Butler on the Bulls, Gordon Hayward on the Jazz, Kyrie Irving on the Cavs, Isaiah Thomas on the Celtics, Avery Bradley on the Celtics, Oladipo on the Thunder, D'Lo on the Lakers, Bledsoe on the Suns, Millsap on the Hawks, I could go on. So much has changed within the NBA, just player movement wise in one calendar year. The Hawks were a good team, the Clippers were a good team, the Grizzlies were a good team. Now all those teams are you know, where they are now, while you got the Knicks, Sixers, Pistons, and Wolves in the playoff mix. It's really hard to believe how much has changed in the NBA in just one year. You also had rule changes like the All-Star game has been redone. The way the NBA draft is going to work is being redone. It just gets you thinking like, what's going to be different next year? And one year from now, how much different will the NBA look? This is honestly a league where anything can happen. Who knows? Next Year, maybe the Nets or the Suns will be considered one of the better teams in the NBA. You never know. What you do know about though is SeatGeek. And if you don't, let me fill you in. SeatGeek is the app that is a must have for NBA fans who enjoy or want to go see games live. They let you see the view from the seat before you purchase as well as rank the seat on a scale from one to 100 to make sure that you are getting the absolute best deal. Speaking of best deal, you can enter the promo code SDC to receive $20 off your first order to make it an even better deal. Download the app in the description box below. Y'all like that plug? Now with that out the way though, we gotta get into what went down in the NBA yesterday, Lego. Finally, 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 the Bucks were able to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. Look, tons of people have Giannis Peg to be the next big thing in the NBA after LeBron, but in order for that to happen, he would one day have to be the guy to dethrone LeBron in the Eastern Conference. When that day will be, no one knows. But for now, Giannis was finally able to lead the Bucks over the Cavs in a regular season game at least, 119 to 116. The Bucks barely held on to a huge lead that they had built up in the first three quarters. Milwaukee led the Cavs by 15 headed into the fourth quarter, but that's when LeBron and the rest of the Cavs started to get their act together and make a run. The climax of this game though came in the final second as after a near turnover, Giannis out hustled LeBron James, came up with the ball for the score to put this game away. Even though LeBron did have a pretty cheeky play for Giannis at the end as he bounced the ball off the Greek Freak's back and drained the triple on the inbounds play, but still down with only one second left to go in the game, it, it was over. This is probably the best battle that I have seen these two guys have so far. LeBron with 30 nine points and seven assists while Giannis had 27 points 14 rebounds and eight assists on that note though is it just me or whenever these two guys play each other do you feel it too I ain't talking about no magic in the air or anything I'm talking about like an unspoken rivalry between LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo do you guys feel any tension between LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo to me it kind of feels like LeBron knows about the hype around Giannis Antetokounmpo he knows that some people have him pegged to dethrone him in the Eastern Conference one day. And knowing that he always plays with this certain edge, this extra assertiveness going up against Giannis. Of course, he's never going to admit to this because why, why would he? And then same thing for Giannis. Now he says how much respect he has for LeBron. He said earlier in the year that he doesn't even want to be mentioned in the same sentence as LeBron right now, since LeBron is one of the greatest to have ever played the game and Giannis just isn't on that level yet. But in the back of his mind, he knows that one day he wants to dethrone LeBron in the Eastern Conference and knows that one day he might have what it takes to do it, but 
he is just not quite there yet. And the game last night had more of a playoff atmosphere to it. You could tell that both of these teams really wanted this win more than just the typical game. The reactions by some of the key players in the final play alone pretty much summed up the story of this game. The way Giannis couldn't control his excitement after coming up with the score. I don't know if anyone peeped it, but Dwayne Wade chucking the ball at the rim out of frustration. LeBron sprawled out of the court like dang. He couldn't believe that just happened. Last night, I truly feel as if it was step one to Giannis becoming the next big thing in the NBA. Giannis taking over the league from LeBron James. Now there might be like a hundred more steps that he has to take, but still this feels like it was step one. Growing pains. If there was a word or phrase to describe what the six are going through right now, it would be growing pains, or in Joel Embiid's case, just pain, as he remains out with a sore back. You had to figure that after that triple overtime against the Thunder that this would happen. Embiid played, I believe, 49 minutes in that game, and at the start of the season, the Sixers didn't even want to play more than 25, 26, or 27 minutes per game, so that was his first time playing some real extra, extra, extra minutes. Now they're just hoping that he's ready to play in their Christmas Day game. So Embiid is in pain, and I hope he gets better soon, but the Sixers team as a whole are suffering some pretty severe growing pains. With the 101 to 95 loss to the Sacramento Kings last night, the Sixers now dropped to 14 and 16 out of the year and have lost seven of their last eight games. Some of those losses coming to teams like the Bulls, the Suns, the Lakers, and now the Kings. All teams that the Sixers should have been easily able to beat with how well they were playing earlier in the year. So yeah, they're struggling a bit. Now it's easy to also point out that for four of those losses, they were without Joel Embiid. But I mean, he played against Phoenix and they lost, and he played against LA and they lost. And of course he played against OKC too. So it's not just because they are missing Joel Embiid. This is simply something that most younger teams in the NBA experience, growing pain, when they are trying to turn the corner and actually become a good team in the NBA. They're gonna go through rough patches. My Piston just had one where they lost seven straight games, but they finally turned it around. And so will the Sixers. I mean, Ben Simmons has still been playing amazing. It's just down the stretch, Philly makes some mistakes that cost them the game. Zach Randolph though, has been amazing for the Kings and that kind of cost the six of the game last night. It seems like whenever the Kings win, it's mostly because of Zach Randolph. He had 27 points while Buddy Heald at 24 off the bench. If you could combine these two teams, then you would actually have a complete team. These teams, oddly enough, both have what the other team needs. The Pelicans have the big men that the Wizards need, and the Wizards have the guards and the wings that the Pelicans need. Imagine a lineup of John Wall, Bradley Beal, Otto Porter Jr., AD, and Boogie. Ring after ring after ring, nothing but straight Ws. Let me stop before I give Wizards fans any false hope though because uh, that that just ain't happening. That's a pipe dream. However, maybe not for Cousin because a part of me still feels that it's a strong possibility that in the offseason you could see him end up with the Wizards seeing how close he is with John Wall. But it's useless to think about that right now. John Wall still isn't playing 100% like John Wall. On the season so far, he's only averaging 19 points, just under nine assists and four rebounds per game. Those aren't bad numbers, but compared to the year that he was having last year, they seem like they are. Last year, he was putting up 23 points and 11 assists per game, shooting the ball 45% of the field, compared to the 41% he's shooting this year. And he was only getting better as the year went on last year. In the postseason, dude was putting up 27 and 11. I think we all just expected to see more of that to start this year, but he has been having some injuries, you know, knee problems. He had to get them injected with some stuff a couple weeks ago. So there is that, and then he also started off the year last year slow too. So I am expecting him to get back to that level at some point. He was still good enough for the Wizards yesterday though, and despite them nearly blowing a huge lead, they held on to get the 116 to 106 win over the Pelicans. Wall with 18 points and 10 assists while Beal at 26 and Mike Scott had 24 off the bench. Davis and Cousins combined for 63 for New Orleans. But that wraps up all the action from yesterday. You guys can go vote for the player of the day by clicking this little uh, card thing right here. Just remember, the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. Yesterday, you guys selected Jimmy Butler and his 37 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists as your player of the day. And if you guys are still watching the video to this point, then I know that you are a real one. And just for that, I saved this little announcement just for you guys. Your boy done started a podcast called The Dish. It's been quietly in the works for like a month now, and the first episode just released this morning. All of the links to it on iTunes and everything like that down in the description if you want to check it out. It's got B-Souls on it, our friend Dom, not Dom2K, but 
Dom 2K was about to be on it soon, so there is that. And then Legend of Winning, aka Low, aka the number one Pistons hater, will also be on it from time to time as well. It's gonna be really dope, and I'm excited about it. Like I said, links are in the description if you want to check out the first episode. That's going to do it for today, though. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to smack that like button as well as subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with everything that's going on on the NBA in a daily basis. But until tomorrow, keep getting the bucks to my TC, and I'm out of here.